In a recent interview, Derek James, the new trainer of Anthony Joshua, said the following, Definitely looking forward to April the 1st. I feel the world hasn't seen the best of Anthony Joshua, especially with the guy I've been working with in the gym. I know that Jermaine Franklin is a very good fighter and is taking it seriously. All right, so those are the words of Derek James. He also goes on to say, I think it's so much about Anthony being the fighter he wants to and needs to be. It's all about him. It's not about anybody else. It's about his legacy and him trying to improve on it. At the same time, it's us building and for him to be the best version of himself that night. The time we have, three months, is not a lot, but it depends on what level you're working on. We're working on a high level. He's a very intellectual fighter. He can do it. He's maintaining and understanding everything I'm asking him to do. All right, so those are the words of Derek James. Now, it's kind of 50-50 at the moment. In fact, it may not even be 50-50 with regards to the way the fans perceive Anthony Joshua at this stage. There's certainly a significant proportion of the public who believe that Anthony Joshua is now on a downward trajectory, that his best days are over and it's downhill from here on in. But there are other people who think that, no, we actually haven't yet seen the best of Anthony Joshua. The best is yet to come. I'm actually not sure. And that's why I am interested to find out how his career goes from here. My gut feeling is that we haven't seen the best of Anthony Joshua, but I could be wrong. Right? I could very well be wrong on that. My gut feeling is Derek James has something that he might be the missing piece that Anthony Joshua has needed for all these years. Um, that's my gut feeling. But I also wouldn't be shocked, even though I'm expecting Anthony Joshua to beat Jermaine Franklin, I wouldn't be shocked if he went in there and got chinned. It's one of them ones because Anthony Joshua, even though he's got all this ability and what have you, he's also got this vulnerability we've seen so many times in his career before. So with regards to what the actual truth is, i.e. is he on the ascent? Are we yet to see the best of him or is he on the decline? It's up in the air. <laughs> it's, it's kind of 50-50. I'm slightly leaning towards we haven't seen the best of him, but again, if he got chinned by Jermaine Franklin, I wouldn't be shocked. So, yeah, th the reason that I suspect AJ might have more in the tank and you know might not yet quite be at his peak is physically he hasn't really taken a lot of punishment. Yeah, that, that was the Andy Ruiz fight where he got beaten up and he took some big shots against Klitschko. But other than that, he hasn't really been in a lot of tough fights. You know, AJ doesn't get hit that much typically. And so, as the old saying goes in boxing, you're only as old as the number of punches you've taken or the amount of fights you've had. And AJ hasn't had that many fights, hasn't taken that many punches. The wear and tear for AJ is more psychological wear and tear. Obviously, there is the stuff in the gym, and there's been stories over the years of AJ getting chinned in the gym. We know about that. But that notwithstanding, the wear and tear on AJ is mainly psychological. You know, you you compare AJ to someone like Dylan White, for example. Dylan White, to me, has taken way more punishment, right? Way more physical miles on the clock than AJ. AJ, I think, is physically a lot fresher than Dylan White. But mentally is where AJ has taken punishment. Uh, some fighters psychologically are just very, very robust and strong, like Dylan White. Other fighters are a little more fragile psychologically, like AJ. I think we have to say that. I know AJ didn't like his uh, previous trainer, Robert Garcia, saying that. And as I said, it was probably not a good thing for Garcia to say it publicly. But I, I think it's the truth. You know, AJ is not as tough psychologically as some of the other guys in the heavyweight division. But psychology can be rectified to a certain extent. Yes, a lot of it is innate and you're not going to be able to turn somebody's personality completely on its head in most instances and totally transform them, especially when they reach this age. When someone is a lot younger, the psyche is more malleable, right? But as they get older, they get more set in their ways and their their uh, mindset and their patterns are a lot more difficult to break. So with Anthony Joshua, can Derek James make the difference? Can he put him 
in the right psychological state to get the absolute best uh, physical performance from him. Again, I suspect he probably will, but we'll see. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? Then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalog of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called the Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.